I would like to talk to you about my coding journey and, a l and at the end a demo on a traffic light that is using hooks, which is the new React thing introduced at the time of React Conf. My name is Revel and I'm nine years old. I enjoy coding. I'm going to be describing all the languages that have led up to React, ranging from in difficulty from easy to difficult, which are still possible. And over the past years, I've learned a lot of languages, but all have been fun to learn. The first one I learned was Scratch. It's intuitive for kids, has an online editor, and made by MIT. What could get better than that? Now, I just want to raise your hand if you've heard of Scratch before. And this is a little strange, but raise your hand if you know how to use Scratch. Wow, a lot less people. <laughs> That's surprising. And it's block-based, so you just put the blocks together and it goes through a sequence. But I wanted something more difficult, something that had a challenge. That's when I came across Python. Python is a very good first language. It has many modules, and don't be surprised if I say that it is simple, but it does get kids started with GitHub. There's many things that you can download off of GitHub that you can remix or refactor. I asked Dad what he was doing with this thing called JavaScript and React, and I had no idea what that was at that time, and I asked him if I could do it. He told me that I should learn JavaScript first. So he told me to use CodePen. It's just basic HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, not JavaScript. Sadly, you, there's no packages. And I just want to give a shout out to Free Code Camp for helping me learn JavaScript and CSS. You've been very helpful. And I, I want to say that after a long time of learning how to do just basic HTML and CSS and whatever, I could finally consulted Dad, and he told me I was finally ready to learn React. So he, he helped me learn React using Code Sandbox. You can import many packages and has many templates, including React and Angular, and Vanilla, whatever. Finally, the live coding demo. Can everybody see? Is this good? Yes. Okay, so basically, the, the way we're coding this is that right here, we have a traffic light. We have two of them staggered. Wait. Sometimes it gets a little off. I need to refresh the page. So we have two traffic lights that are staggered. So while one is green, the other would be red. And we're, we're rendering two traffic light components with each passing in a different initial value, one of zero and one of one. That's what gives it its staggered. So we'll go see what traffic light oh my God, actually is. <laughs> Here is where we're actually using hooks. If you can see up at the top that we're importing React, but we're importing use state and use effect too. Anything with use is basically a hook. Right here, we're, you, we're, here's where we're actually doing, going, into, going into the hooks. Cons, we're making a constant, which is, a tra which is traffic light, and we're taking in the, our, the, pro the property of initial value, which is the initial value we passed in when, back in index.js. We're making a constant, and we're setting it to use state, and we're passing in the initial value. We're destructuring it to be two elements, color index and set color index. Color index is basically the object that's returned in the old state using classes. And set color index, which is the center function, is basically like set state. Now, now we have two things returned. Color index and set color index. Now we're using them down here with use effect. Use effect calls whatever functions inside it every time the, your app is re-rendered. Though if you pass in a, sep, a second or, prop or argument, it, the effect is otherwise. 
So we're making a, a function with a constant inside it. We're setting it to a set timeout, which, if you all know, takes two props, two, two, are, two props, a function and a duration. We're taking a function and making it set color index, which is we're using our setter function and setting it to our our variable plus one modulo three. Now I need to say, raise your hand if you know how modulo works. Most of you should. But <laughs> for you who don't know, modulo basically takes the number and once you go three digits in, it goes back to the original. So up, so it would be zero, one, two, zero, one, two. Even though it's two, you know, coding starts at zero, so it's three digits. And then here's our duration. Light durations, sub color index. For this demo purpose, we'll say color index equals zero. So it would be 500 milliseconds. Now we're returning a, a clear timeout, which is a timer. We're, we're not, we're, and we're passing timer. We're, and we're using that to clear the timeout, which we're not really using. Down here, we're passing three lights. That's what's three lights inside of here. We're passing in a color and whether it's active or not. Active is the opacity. See red, yellow, and well, red, green, yellow, and red. The yellow and red are 0.4 opacity, which makes them not active. Now, basically we're passing in a Boolean for whether it's active or not. Color index equals 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 zero. Like I said, we'll pretend that color index is zero. So this would be true, this would be false, and that would be false. Now let's check out light. Light is basic. It doesn't use hooks because it's a stateless functional component. Simple. We're making a self-closing div with the class name of light. Gives it its border radius. Then its style is background color of color and opacity of active, which then we're adding a ternary. Now a ternary works basically by doing active, which is the variable we're using, or a hard-coded true or false, and then a, num a number for if it's true, or a value for if it's true, and a value for if it's false. That's what's giving it. That's what's giving its, its opacity. Now that's basically it. What's next? There's all these languages I could learn next, and I, I have a bit.ly up. It's bit.ly slash lang dash poll. You can vote which language I should learn next. You can just, it's just for fun. I've never really done this before. I might not take it into account, but I, I, I don't know which one to do. I, I'm, I'm, I'm a loss of words. I really don't know which one to learn. Thank you guys. My traffic light is on Code Sandbox if you want to go to bit.ly slash my traffic light. And thank you guys. <laughs> what? Do you have one question? Sure. We're taking one question. Uh, what made you want to learn to code? Well, so what made me want to learn to code is that, I mean, Dad was coding, and it was basically him who, because we worked together to learn React, and I didn't mention this, but Python, I learned all by myself. Like, he, he had nothing to do with it, so that was, that was all me. I learned it through books over the summer. And, yeah, so he basically told me to start coding in Scratch. I don't really remember if it was him telling me or if I just sort of wanted to, but... I know it started all through React and, th and through Scratch and him wanting to start it. Awesome.